Okay, uh, six o'clock, I'll call the uh, meeting to order. Uh, regular meeting, Conservation Commission in the Wetland Agency, Tuesday, June 28th by Zoom. Um, do we have a roll call, please? Yes, Jim Balliot? Here. Cheryl Brown? Here. Matt Merluzzi? Here. John Milling? Here. And Matt Pence. Here. Great. Okay, we have a quorum. All right, excellent. Uh, we have a we have a quorum, so we can move on to public comments. Do we have anybody um, who would like to speak on our list? Uh, no, there are no attendees waiting in the wings. No attendees. Okay, must be summertime. <laughs> I uh, think so. All right, we go on to number four, receive discussion, S22601, 198 West Norwalk Road. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Baker, I presume. Uh, Correct. Up there in the uh, upper right, holding down the fort. Um, corrective action, removal of vegetation and revegetation of the slope adjacent to a wetland and a water course, uh, Florsheim Pond, my name, I think. Um, Alexis, can you bring us up to speed? Sure. And I'll just uh, note that uh, Catherine Knight arrived at, at 601. So she is here as well. Um, so a, a notice of violation was issued in uh, mid to late May um, for this property there. Uh, let me share my screen. I'll do a Oops. Sorry, let's get on. Um, so that's kind of a messy map, but um, we're in West Norwalk, <laughs> on West Norwalk Road, and um, there's the Five Mile River, and here's the pond, and then the, oops, got two properties highlighted. Um, well, maybe having a, having trouble with my, it's slowly loading. I think I'm asking too much with my computer. Um, but so the, the property is to, to the, uh, east side of West Norwalk Road. It's a rear lot with, um, a residence right in the middle of the lot and then a steep slope. And you can start to see as it slowly loads the, uh, contour lines. So again, contour lines that are far apart from each other um, are uh, relatively flat, whereas lines close to the, together are steep. Um, and it's this, this area just off of the back of the house between the residence and the, um, the pond uh, river that experienced some uh, more aggressive clearing that met the level of what's required with a, a wetland permit. So, I'm gonna stop share because my computer is making funny noises. Um, so we, we issued the uh, property owners a notice of violation citing the removal of vegetation um, on the slope adjacent to the wetland water course. And um, the property owners are here tonight uh, since being alerted to the need for a wetland permit, they've been um, more than attentive in getting together a corrective action um, application, which hopefully you found on the pending applications uh, webpage. And um, I think I'll turn it over to them. I can share my screen and scroll through your application if that's easier uh, for you applicants, well, or you can share your screen. Uh, for Speaking for the commissioners, I um, it would be good if the commissioners so View the photo. Mr. and Mrs. Baker, if you could, if, if somewhere along the line, it would be good to review the, the excellent photographs that you submitted. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, Alexis, can you do that? Just take us yes. through. Yeah, so, will, uh... as, if you can go to the first map after the narrative, which basically is the same, uh, kind of a blown up version of what this is the survey. So you can see I've highlighted the property in 
yellow. Um, and you can see how, how close we sit to the slope. Now, we screwed up on this. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, as I indicated in my, my narrative, um, when we moved here, we this particular stretch of land, which I call the impacted area, there were small trees growing at that point, which would keep growing, and then we trim them back so we could still get a view from our screened-in porch and from our sunroom window to this incredible island and the view of you know what what we look out to um and that would happen normally about every two years they just trim them low enough so that we could we could still see and then last year or this year i decided well they're going to grow back anyway so why don't i just cut them down to the ground which i had done and that was my big mistake because that's not something I should be able to do. And I recognize that and we're sorry about that for sure. And so Alexis was really helpful in you know, setting us up with understanding what we did and how to approach um, you, the commission, with a plan. Um, and I, I know that you're probably here a lot while well, nature's taking its course and blah, blah, blah. But in this case, it, it's amazing. Um, these are all small, like uh, sassafras and saplings and things. And they, I don't know how they grow so fast, but they just do. Um, and then we thought that it would be appropriate because down near the bottom where, the, where this area, which is again, a very steep slope, our house sits only 15 feet off the edge of this 45 degree angle, 30 some odd foot slope um, that we put some of, of the retaining walls, uh, retaining type plantings in reviewing with Alexis of what would make sense for this area and be careful to maintain those properly as the rest of the, the undercover um, grows back as, as are these small trees. My plan in, in taking the trees to the ground was to, there was obviously, um, periwinkle that had been there for years. I think the previous owner had definitely, there were beautiful gardens here that we're trying to restore. And I was trying to get what thought it'd be easier to get rid of all the invasive stuff. So this periwinkle could keep growing down the slope, but again, not that, cause I thought it'd be a lot easier to access, but again, not, not such a great idea. That's still something I would like to do, but clearly that doesn't have anything to do with our, uh, you know, our, our situation of, um, you know, of, of not doing the right thing um, and how we did it. So if you go to the next page, you'll see the impacted area, um, which is directly from our house to the, to the water. And I've identified it as impacted area. And all those small little brown dots are the little trees that are the trees that were there um and the the green is the undergrowth that, that's growing back as well and then at the bottom are are the recommendation of these plantings that we would do down the bottom now i also indicated because i wanted to be very you know i was a little nervous about this to be honest um so i wanted alexis to be i want to be clear and forthcoming in everything that we have done in in this area so if you'll note on the right side and the left side, there are different brown dots. Those are all there. there there's a, a lot of trees, as you'll see in the photographs, that separate our property from the water outside of the impacted area I mentioned. And there have been over the years, the, the ones with the uh, X's are trees that I had taken down. Um, they're indicated in terms of their size. And the ones with circles around them were ones that were either dead or we had a tornado run through here uh, what, a couple of years ago that, that took out um, a couple of trees and one which really damaged our house, unfortunately. Um, but I want you to see those two so that, you know, I'm fessing up on, on everything that, uh, that we had done. But also to give you a, a shot at how many trees are, you know, are there. Um, in, in, as, as you go down the embankment. And when you, the next page is the view from inside the house um, to the screened in porch that overlooks um, Florsheim Pond, which is really quite an amazing thing because that island in the middle 
it's all rock faced and there's drainage on it. And, and I did the research on it. This was close to yeah, really close to 19 between somewhere between 1925 and 1940. This was done. Yes. Um, it, amazing. And it's angled um, so that when the river comes down at the, where it's about 20 feet wide and then it opens up to several hundred feet wide where the pond is and then goes over a waterfall on the other side. The island's angled so that it doesn't disrupt the current, which is also like amazing to me. Clearly it was a skating pond or something at one point. And the goal is someday with my neighbor who owns the larger share of it, hopefully to be able to come to the commission and say, look, if we is there a chance that we can restore this to some way that would be acceptable? But that's that's way down, way down the road. But it's a beautiful site. You turn to the next page. This is the view um, of the impacted area from that sun room window on very April steep. 15th. It doesn't look very steep, but it is steep, believe me. And there you can see the island. Um, so that's what it looked like on April 15th after I had um, um, cut it down and it was starting to grow back. And then on the next page is on May 15th. And you can see how it's already, you know, there's my, I'm, the boat wasn't moved and you can see how it's already like starting to, to grow and then the next page is the view from the window on the 13th and again you can see how you know my goodness how things like start coming back so soon um, the following page is uh, a shot of the impacted area as of 613 which was the last shot that i took and you can see the you know the the saplings coming up again and then the view of the island and way off to the right is the waterfall it's like a vertical drop right right and then the next page is i know the, the camera doesn't make it look like it's as steep as it as it is um the next page is uh from the north side um looking you can see the patio that we have there too that goes right up right up to the edge and those little stanchions on the right are the are the base that are holding up the screened in porch so that's again that's that's the view and then this is on the other side um, of the house where the impacted area would be to the left of this to show you where those other trees were that I that I had mentioned and I took that on the 13th and then this is um, the same up, up closer of the same um, and I indicated there that um, there's where the grass goes the embankment there are four varying tree tree width trunks there from two to ten inches um, that were taken out because of the, the information that I had, had shared with you earlier um, tornado and then some were dead and then the last photo is uh, the next photo is from the left side of the house uh, as you're facing it again you see the porch and as you get further away from the impacted area you can see all the vegetation and everything you know that's there and there were there were three trees that i had taken down there um two of which uh, two of the three which were were dead but i still should have had permits and then from there what i did was i took photos up close of the vegetation and the trees that are coming back um, this next picture, you can see the periwinkle in the bottom left and the top center right. That's all, that was all planted by someone. Um, there's there's more history to this house <laughs> that, that I don't want to. I, I don't. You don't have the time to go into. I'd love to tell you about, but um, it, it's incredible some of the things that we found. But you can see clearly sassafras um, and how those stalks are coming right up from where I cut it, which is pretty pretty amazing and then up top again you can see that's the lower level where you walk out on the patio turn the page you'll see some oaks that are beginning to come back again this was taken on the 13th um, again on the 13th the next one and here if you look where I indicated stump that that's that's the so the stump comes up it's about oh I'd say that stump's about two inches wide and it comes up about four inches maybe three inches and look what's coming out of it i mean already and that's that's what i was trying to share with the committee next page is um, other um, vegetation that are coming out um, and growing up um, some invasive some not next page is you can actually see see at the bottom the stump it's, it's like it's like jack and the beanstalk 
um, and the new growth that's coming up in that impacted area. Um, there's, oh, there's a, that's the one I wanna show you. The next one is a different stump. And so that's about the size of these trees that were the average, that would just grow up. And, and here's, here's the growth coming out of that in the impacted um, area. And then the next one, there's, yeah, there's, there's more. And these are all different areas of the impacted area that I took these photos. They're not duplicates um, of the same thing from different, different angles. So it, it really is pretty, pretty incredible. And then the last one is the, um, you know, from the patio, which someday I hope to uh, restore and level with a permit um, to, uh, to take advantage of, of, of the view. So that's my story. Well, Mr. Baker, oh. I, I would oh. love to think that, uh, I think that every Norwalker has the uh, uh, devotion to their environment that you and Mrs. Baker have. Anyway, um, uh, just, a, just a side question, uh, Florshine Pond uh, and the dam at the lower end, um, does it tend to stay at the same level? I mean, is it more or less the same level uh, as it is here, or uh, does it change significantly? Well, a, does the dam? That's a very good question. The dam is actually, it was a very well-made dam, and since Connecticut changed its, its, its you know, who's responsible for dams, <laughs> um, we've gotten to know our neighbors quite well, and the dam, we had an engineer look at it once and it's slanted a little bit from behind it, which, which and it has a sluice gate, which I don't think has been open forever. But when there are storms, um, the definitely you, the, the water level um, rises. Um, only once has it gone over those rocks um, on the facing of the island, um, but it definitely moves a lot quicker. Unfortunately, on our side of the island, which is another project for another day, the sludge and the um, dredge materials has, has increased over the years. And if you take a step out there, you're gonna disappear, which I actually did, <laughs> which my, my wife bought me one of those big suits up to here and I was so excited to walk out to the aisle. <laughs> and until I said, are you all right? I, I refrained from laughing, but I mean, then I, when I heard, yeah. So I, I basically to disappeared yeah. into the sludge. <laughs> um, but so ideally we want to have that fixed and that'll be another conversation that I look forward to with you about how to, how to move some of the, you know, some of that up. So, so to answer your question directly, the water does rise, but not to, um, you know, not to any significant level that it has pushed a lot of, yeah, here's, here's the good shot. If you I, don't can, you I don't can know if you it. can see that or not. I don't. Am I in the right place for the camera? I don't know. Can you see that? That's the back view of our house. That's Dee Dee in a canoe looking up. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So you can see how the trees grew up. But um, so the river, to answer your question, it, it definitely, it's kind of cool to watch when it really storms, it pushes was a lot of crap up upstream that all came down and dumped here, which creates more problem, obviously, that, that we try to take out when appropriate um, if it's blocking something. But uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Baker. Uh, commissioners, uh, any uh, questions, comments, observations? Um, I, I have two questions. Um, but thank you so much for, obviously you're very passionate about the environment and we really appreciate um, your intention and love as, as John said about the environment. I guess one question I have for Alexis is just about the periwinkles. Mm -hmm. I, my understanding is that they're invasive. Oh, uh, you're kidding. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're, that um... they kind of wind up really spreading rapidly and they can crowd out natural, um, wildflowers or native wildflowers and plants because they're pretty um, aggressive spreaders. Um, wow. And the second question I have is just in terms of like trimming the trees for a point of clarification, 
because it's not just the removing of trees, but is it kind of standard that I'm just thinking about other recommendations we've made to other property owners to put in trees? Is it possible that people dwarf the trees on a regular basis that we're not actually putting back in canopy trees? Well, I'm not right. sure I understand. So it's not just the cutting of trees, but it's like the cutting off the growth of the tree. So not allowing a tree to grow. Oh, okay. Well, so that's the there, that's the question I have. Right. It's just there, um, I can assure yeah. you there are enough trees. If, if that picture that Didi showed of from the water up, there are enough trees there that it was you're in the shade. I mean, there they were like. A, if you look at my little map of the ones that uh, I actually went out and counted all the ones. This that, work. This is work. Yeah. yeah I'm not quite. So. I'm not sure. But to answer your question, there were probably. I mean, we're not talking five or six trees. We're talking or saplings, I like to call them. But we're talking twenty-five that were that were all within that one space, and it is. There's no light. I mean, it's shady underneath it. So the, the canopy is definitely protected. I think someone plan, I think someone must have thought this through because there's nowhere else on the, the whole line of the river, which is that we have in property, it's probably 175 feet. And there's nothing like this one section that has all these, you know, sassafras and trees growing all together. Um, I don't know that, but that, that's my thought because it doesn't look anything like any of the other areas. It's only right within the viewing area. So um, I, would, I would say that periwinkle is definitely, it's not, not, not a native species. Um, I guess I generally consider it more naturalized than invasive. It, it certainly does have its um, spreading abilities and because and, it is kind of a vine-like uh, ground cover. Um, so it's, um, yeah, not, not, I guess not, not the best, not, not the worst, but that's kind of my, my opinion, but I, I, I wouldn't call it invasive. Um, it only tends to spread where it has been planted as opposed to a uh, truly invasive plant is good at invading kind of new territory, if that makes sense. Uh, but it does definitely naturalize and spread uh, like it has done here. And then about the, the topping, um, th it comes down to uh, maintenance. So there are certain, as of right, um, maintaining activities a, a property owner can do. So like the lawn mowing, for instance, you're allowed to maintain and continue to cut your, your lawn or to have um, shape, sh shaped shrubs, you can continue to kind of shape those. And when I reviewed the aerial photos of this property and also spoke to the property owner and a neighboring owner, it sounded like there have always been large canopy trees on either side of the, of the, the kind of the house, but this strip down has Kind of always been maintained as this lower level um, assortment of trees. And I think that's why there's so much sassafras and kind of these new growth trees, because it has had this, this apparent, you know, history for probably a, a very long time of, of um, shoring down the, the, the new growth. And um, it's been done frequently enough that, that there's, um, it, continues to be kind of this new growth successional uh, woodland and, and none of your older trees, if that makes, makes sense. So from the, from the aerial photos, it didn't look like there were big canopy trees in this area that were removed. Um, but on the other hand, they, they definitely have been um, kind of kept at a, at a lower, you know, not allowed to, to progress into canopy trees for some time, um, but always a, well, a kind of a tough, a tough call uh, between maintenance activities and kind of changing that natural and indigenous character of the land. Um, I, it, it seems that uh, 
there is uh, plenty of room for uh, staff environmental recommendations to dovetail uh, with the bikers, the bakers concerns. Um, and I would think we could just pursue that, could we not? Um, at this stage of the game? I mean, what would be the next, the next? A lot of the pictures we were showing show a lot of vegetation that was cut down within the 50 yard limit. Um, what, are we discussing like a remediation program or new construction or I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, no. So, uh, um, I'll just share my screen again of the photos from when we um, went out there when the when the violation was issued. Give me a second. But so right, they're not proposing any to answer I mean, your I just, I'm not sure what I'm deciding on. That's all. I, if I want to vote, I want to have to make sure what I, I know what I'm voting on. So. Okay, and so they they are di directed under the notice of violation to uh, file for a corrective action permit to uh, both show the regulated activities that they did without a permit, and so the the activities that I cited were the clearing of vegetation, so the cutting of the the small uh, trees down down to the ground basically. Um, and the remedy for that is to file for a corrective action application that shows the work that's already been done, the regulated activities that have already been done, and any other uh, mitigative activities that they might propose. So that's kind of what, what their application is. So at this point, they have their, their, it's a receipt of the application. So it is up for your initial comments and, and review as far as the, um, the, adequacy of the proposed um, mitigation. And so what I took from the submitted material and what the bakers just said, their, their idea of the mitigation is to um, not cut back the existing vegetation and the photo showed um, you know, re regrowth happening. And then I think they're proposing five shrubs near the base of the, the slope. So it's the commission's job to, to decide um, the, whether the, the scope of the proposed work going forward is uh, acceptable or not. Well, in my personal opinion, <coughs> it's acceptable uh, subject to, you know, the same sort of oversight that staff has been giving it so far. Uh, I don't see very much uh, uh, distance between uh, the bakers and 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 our uh, lawful interests in this. What 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 next step do we need to take? Do we have to uh, make a motion? Do we have to? Uh, oh, move so towards re receipt of an application. So you um, could not make a decision tonight. Um, your first opportunity to make a decision would be at your next meeting, which is the second um, Tuesday of July. Um, so for tonight, it would just be discussion and um, uh, discussion of any, any voicing any concerns or any comments to assist either the applicant in amending their plans or to assist me in coming up with a draft resolution for your next meeting. Yeah, do you think we have enough for a draft resolution? Enough uh, input from the commissioners and from the uh, applicant? Seems to me we do. I just wanna say, I, I, if we vote tonight, I'll probably vote no, just because I haven't seen the property, but I would I would love to meet with Bruce, Bruce Baker personally, and then I'll vote yes, but I'll still, I'll still pass it anyway, so I'm... Yeah, so problem. again, yeah, voting tonight is is not 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 allowed, and um, you can certainly do a, a inspection of the property. I would not. You can't have any discussions with the applicant, and the applicant can have any discussions with you outside of a public meeting. But you can certainly go look at the look at the property. Wow! I encourage that. Right, I'm a new. I'm, you know, I don't know anything about this. Stuff. I know. <laughs> that's why. That's why I'm saying. I'm dabbling. I'm dipping my toes in. So. Yep. So, uh, so go go look, but uh, no 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 conversations outside the um, the, the the public realm. 
And then and um, may, Ms. I, may, oh. may I just remind um, Alexis just to um, ask uh, that anybody who, who, who does come down this long driveway and, and take a look is, is welcome. It's just don't go too close to the edge or or you will in fact find yourself in the river. So <laughs> it's, steep. Um, it's deceptively steep. Okay, Ms. Ms. Uh, Commissioner Knight has her hand raised. Oh, you're, you're muted. I'm, I just moved on my screen, so I was like, <laughs> Um, I just have a question on like the resolutions is just, um, you know, I would be more comfortable if there was something in there about not capping the trees going forward. Um, because, really? you know, I think just we have a lot of um, applications. And so I'm just looking that there's some congruency in turn and consistency in terms of what happens and how we protect the boundary areas as a commission. Wow, that, that would be, that would hurt, but you should come and see it um, because if, if those, if those, again, you have to see the size of the, I, I think someone took a lot of thought in doing this. And if I, I, I question how, we would be inhibiting um, the natural or, or nature in combination with how, you know, when we, that you have this incredible view that's right in front of you that was kind of put there for this house to, to take advantage of if, if we're not, um, you know, I get the fact that what I did was wrong. I, I've said that many times. I did. I should not have taken them out. But I, I was under the understanding that you can um, maintain uh, a a sight line to something that you, you know, I mean, it's, it's a big part of the value of the, of the property is the, you know, the view to the to the river from this position that we're fortunate enough to live in. Well, I'm, I'm curious about the sight line. Uh, it seems to me that um, uh, probably through trimming of lower branches, uh, the sight line is um, better than it might otherwise be. Um, like to do my that? understanding of Commissioner Knight's comment is that we try to preserve if your if your photograph went another twenty feet higher, uh, preserve whatever canopy is up there, uh, and not do anything to uh, diminish it, um, because it's it's just plain good for the edge of any kind of water course to have canopy to keep the water the rain heavy rains from washing away things. And whatever. I mean, I, I'm Commissioner Knight. Am, am I sort of is this what you've been sort of concerned about? Well, yeah, I mean, it's just that, you know, when we've, when we've had people have remediated and put in trees and everything, it does, it's not really the intent that you're putting in a tree that, you know, in its natural state would grow up to 50 or 60 feet to provide canopy and benefit for that habitat and environment if then people put in trees and then cap them and they don't actually, they're not forming, performing the function that they should within the boundary area. Yeah, I think so, that the difference is the, uh, the you know. per, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if, I think it, I think it goes back to the um, maintaining versus um, changing the natural and indigenous character. Um, this is what it looked like when we did our inspection, um, sorry, um, in May, right after it had been cleared. And so this is the, the area that the Afton calls the, the impacted area. Um, and so it has, and unfortunately I don't have, it. I kind of cut off the, <laughs> the stuff to the left and the, the stuff uh, behind me. But th this this area where it has, I mean, you can kind of see these little oak, oak trees coming up 
it's mostly uh, periwinkle and, and extremely small um, non-canopy trees, these little, um, so it, it has a very different appearance that it ha has been, um, I mean, there are obviously some, some trees adjacent to it, you can see this, this um, the shadow here, but it has a very different look to it than a, um, an area that was wooded and then cleared, if that makes, makes sense. Um, those, those trees on well, the, the bigger one to the left there, that is actually two trees and they are huge, okay. huge oaks that cover the whole area. But I, let me make a, may I make a suggestion? How about if, cause I like staying in, you know, maybe and call me crazy, but I, I like learning about this stuff from you guys. What if we, if you let us, I know we can't vote tonight, but you let us move forward with our, our plan and then we showed you how these trees will continue to grow and create the canopy that, you know, I I believe is being asked because I'm I know that they certainly did because th there were so many of them and so many that are growing back and they grow so fast that they they will create the canopy in the shade with because remember when we're talking about topping them we're on a steep slope. So it's not like we're topping them on a level, all right? We're, we're, they still get a good chance to grow um, up, up high, but we just keep it so that we can see from the porch, from the screen porch, um, or from the sunroom, we can see the river and the island. At the risk of being pedantic, let me just ask for a definition of what topping is, because in my mind, it's the, it's the, the trimming of the canopy. And yet I don't think that's what you're talking about. I, I don't know either. I just know that when they get up to the point of being over the porch or higher than the porch or over the windows, then then that's where I would, you know, cut them, cut them back as they had been before. Okay, so you're talking about protecting your property. The capping is related to that. Yes. Okay. Uh, now I understand. Yeah, it, it's about so that when we sit on the, you know, again, the, 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 the land goes steep down. But so it's about when you're sitting on this porch that's up high, and we're talking 30 feet from the base, that you're not having these in this one impacted area, you're not having these. Uh, let's say there are 20 of these growths right there, you know, growing up, blocking out the view of our property on, on the river, and yet they still create shade. I mean, very much so. Plus, there are bigger trees over the top of them okay. on, e on either side. Uh, Bruce, how <laughs> deep is the river like on this close? Close entry I, here. I, 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 yeah, I said earlier. I wish it was a lot deeper. I, I when I when we bought the place, I was so excited to walk out to the island. I got a big thing up to my neck with the uh, the, the the coveralls, rubber coveralls, right. waders, and stepped in and almost disappeared. So it's it's sludge, and that's something sludge, down. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's but it's move. It moves. It does move. So it's like uh, three feet, four feet deeper. No, I would say. In it, I mean, based on I was I was up to my shoulders. Slot silt. I was a lot flapping of silt. Flapping around okay. in the silt. Okay. Yeah, silt. Okay. So I'm, you know, one of the things we talked about was down, and there's a five mile river commission too that's helpful with this. So, you know, I know it's very expensive, but that's that's not helping. You know, if if we could help that river, you know, get cleaned out of some of the muck that's come down from above, that would be awesome. Because we want to maintain that flow. See where you're looking right now, where the river is there. That's on the other. That's on our side of this island, and we want that river to keep going down to the waterfall. The other side of the island, it does because that's the natural course of the river. If you look at the maps that I provided, you know it's just where the pond opens up, and then the the river either goes to the right or goes to the left in the pond with the island in the middle to the waterfall. 
and and so when we had the big storms all the silt got pushed to our side and created additional little islands that aren't so pretty <laughs> that, that, that you know at some point uh, you know i'll bring to the commission to see if there's something that can be done i think it's a beautiful piece of property Malik. i'd love to vote later i'm sorry i can't vote tonight yeah uh commissioner about bill valley has been um, yeah, some of it was covered um, while I was here, but my question is about the corrective action plan. So it sounds like it's going to be to kind of leave as is and plant a few bushes in the front. Um, yeah. That's one of my questions. And then my other question is, I know you have all these, um, the new tree growth coming up in that area. Is that new tree growth coming up on either side as well? Do you have the, this issue there? No, um, that's the no. thing that's so bizarre is that the that growth that is is only within that twenty five foot or whatever I said in area that's mm -hmm. under our windows and and the porch. That's where it all comes up, <laughs> and and it's just these these tiny these trees that just come up next to each other. And grow the rest of the property on either side is undergrowth and then bigger trees you know big we didn't take any of the big any big there were no big trees to take out in this this area i wouldn't have done that anyway but there there were no there were there are none it's a cleared space in its natural environment that had these other trees coming up creating shade underneath our house and um that's what I that's what I removed because I said, why am I trimming them every year or every couple of years? Why don't I just because I was going to clean out the the invasive stuff because I didn't realize periwinkle was invasive <laughs> and have that flow down to the river because I thought it'd be beautiful under these trees and they grew back. Um, and do you have any other space on the property to replace any of the trees that were taken down and and have the ability to let those grow to complete canopy? What other trees taken, the ones taken down? You took, you said, I thought you said that you took like 25 or so smaller trees down it, or yeah. at least you're not gonna allow or you would prefer not to allow the trees that are growing there now to grow to their full canopy size. Well, I, I think, <laughs> So if you look at maybe what's, I misunderstood. Yeah, this is important. Um, so if you look at the map that that's right there now, you can see the house line and the porch line and this what we call this impacted area in by in front of the porch and the um, sunroom. So there were no big trees in that area ever. To my not, there was one that was a stump that was when we moved here. It's rotted. It's been there. So there was never any major trees there that we took out. They were all these little, you see the little brown dots there. They were all these little trees that I would, um, and the owner pr private, uh, previously would, if it got up to the height of the porch, which again, it's on a steep angle going down to the river, they would just clip them you know, on the top. So they still had a sight line to the river and to the island that I own partially. And then on either side of that, to answer your question, there are big trees, you know, um, and and the ones, you know, the two that are in the top of the, see the two that are on the top of the impacted area, um, those are those are still there and huge, huge trees that that cover that go up on the back of the house, um, but that slope right there is again is about a forty five degree drop, right down to down to the bottom. So there's mm -hmm. plenty of those those saplings growing up again, as is indicated in the pictures that they clearly are, you know, I just need to leave them alone, you know, and if I ever choose, I, I can make an, uh, I can agree that if I choose to top them at sight line, then I can show you guys, you know, what it looks like, you know, so you can feel comfortable with it or, or not. But I'd hate to be told that, you, that I can't sit in the porch and, look at the river if the trees are eight feet tall and um I'm, well, I can, you can tell me what to do you're you're the boss but i that's part of why we bought the bought the house 
But you would be willing to leave the impacted area as is and then trim the tops once they come up to where your porch is. It sounds yeah, like that's what you absolutely. would Absolutely. And then at the bottom where there is some, there is always erosion in the riverfront. And another commissioner mentioned when there, when there are big storms, put these uh, recommended bushes down, down at the bottom of this impacted area um, because the rest of the, the rest of the property we're not talking about really. I mean, we're only right. talking about this area. Wow. I just I showed you on the map to show you, give you a better picture of the whole thing. And to be honest about when we had some damage and things and trees that I did take down without a permit, but they were dead or, um, you know, there, there was a problem with most of them. Um, there weren't many. Uh, but yeah, so those things down the bottom there are really to, to help the erosion if there is any. And I felt like I needed to do something you know, because I made a mistake and, um, you know, I've paid the fine and, and the, if that will help to, you know, down near the river where it's most impacted uh, with the river flow, then I'd certainly want to do that. Um, Alexis, can I, I have a question here. So th this is Commissioner Pence, and I apologize. My uh, my video is not working, so um, I just want to chime in with the question. The impact on draining from before the removal compared to, you know, the, the restoration plan, to me, does not seem like it's going to be too considerable. Alexis, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, to me, if, if the overall result on, on drainage isn't um, that impactful, I'm not as concerned. Do you, do you have any any input there? Um, I'd say that the the good news is that the the um, the area was not grubbed out. So when we when we got there, all the uh, everything had kind of been shorn down to ground level. Um, and our main concern when we saw that, and the reason for issuing the violation was that the way that the property looked in early May, uh, there were bare spots on that slope and no evidence of um, um, vegetation that was going to um, be substantial in its ability to retain that very steep slope. Um, that said, the, the area has uh, certainly Revegetated with um, you know, suckers from the from the cut material, so I'd say that the the concern about the erosion of the slope is uh, taken care of if the applicant um, says is uh, does as they say and leaves leaves the uh, new growth alone, at least until it gets to a certain height. Yeah, it's already covered. I mean, if you, it, it's just unbelievable. I mean, I'm sorry you don't have the photos, but it's where there are bare spots before there be none. <laughs> where does the, uh, when you have a downpour and it hits your patio, where does it go? Where does the water go? It goes down. It's a very good question. It goes down um, that through that area, all right, down, down to the river. But it's funny because it's not, it's not like wetlands in, in a way. It's it's kind of the slope is actually kind of dry, you know, um, in that in that area. So it's the natural that hits the patio and then it goes, you know, just goes down the down the slope. And I've not noticed any erosion. Um, okay, we're just curious I mean, again because our house is my 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 buddy who had no fault in this at all. I want to make that clear. This was all me. Um, was like, Bruce, is it ever going to happen that our house is going to fall in the river? And I was like, no. <laughs> okay. Commissioners, anything further? Uh, then I would. Uh, I would. Uh, no, I didn't know if, um, Jen, if you still have your hand raised again, or is it just hanging? Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> I, I think we have exchanged enough information here that we can uh, proceed towards a resolution at the next meeting. Thank okay. you. Okay. And I recommend um, if you can get out there to have a look, like I do for any property, um, 
but a reminder not to talk in applicants, you should know that uh, the commissioners won't be uh, talk, talking with you, but um, just be do, on your property if they do are. They, do they call us so we know? Uh, no, they, they would just knock on the door and then uh, literally peer over. <laughs> and really? Then, Oh, yeah. okay. So we don't know they're coming. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And and for those that didn't get to see the, I I love the I I have to knock on his door randomly. Or is there not time that works or I don't. Yeah, because yeah, I, I don't really open the door. It's just random. Yeah, people. I don't want to yeah. scare these people. I'm like I'm like six four and two seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a Republican to boot. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you can, you can call. You just can't have any conversation. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. It's fine with me. Yep. Just, just so I don't get. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you all. Yes. Thank and, you. And maybe for the next minute, I'll take another picture and add this to the pack of what it looks like when we talk again. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. For, thank you for thank your. You. Thank you for your time. Yes. Thank you. Okay, we go on to discussion and or decision. Uh, S22596, 75, which lane? Have we made any progress since the last? Uh... Not really, slow, slow progress. Um, as you recall, you had requested a, uh, um, an outside consultant, I believe a professional uh, wetland scientist to review the proposal. Um, we, we did deposit the funds that the applicant was required to uh, remit. I did um, because this of the- 75 which? This is 75 which lane, yes. Because of the, um, the amount of the anticipated uh, work for city procurement uh, reasons, I need to, to um, solicit at least three bids. Uh, I did send out an email and um, a randomly selected uh, professional wetland scientists and none of them have the uh, time or capacity to take this on at the moment. So I, um, at some point today, we'll be sending out another email to the, the same email with um, a request for um, bids to some additional professional wetland scientists. And so, we have an extended uh, period of time to accomplish all this, do we not? Um, yeah, you have. It, it's rapidly dwindling, but yes, you have 65 days from um, I have the application in front of me. Uh, the applicant did grant a full 65 day extension of time. I am hopeful that that full extension will not be needed. Um, but the deadline is not um, within the next couple of meetings. That's for sure. Good. So we have time to resolve it. Yes, and I am working on finding someone that will get out there ASAP. But there's nothing further to be done tonight. Not that I'm aware of. Um, Anybody else have any comments about this? Uh, before oh, Alexis, I was just wondering if you could send me, um, like when we went through this project before, there were like good diagrams up on the screen of what they intended to do with the, the, the pond network on 75 Witch. I drove by today. It almost, it's almost looks like it's becoming part swamp. So I just wanted to see the layout. If you can send me an email, that's fine. Um, yeah, I was thinking that we had uploaded that onto the website. I don't see it. So um, yes, I will make sure that is added to the website. And actually, I think uh, Ms. Mock, if you're listening, I think I'm confusing a, a different project. If you can send us, didn't already, a uh, copy of your uh, PowerPoint presentation that you gave at the receipt of the application, that would be great. And then I can upload that to the website. Um, sure, I would be happy. Thank you. You. Okay, so I'll make sure to um, to get that and to up upload it and send you the link.
Okay, so we can uh, move along to um, S22599-20 Lancaster, uh, Mr. Goldman, um, moving forward on this uh, application to dredge the pond in and adjacent to a wetland and water course. <clears throat> um, yeah. I didn't see anything new on the, on the site except that I reviewed the pictures, which are, which are very helpful, the photographs. Right, so at the last meeting, which was basically the receipt of the application, um, you heard a presentation from Mr. Goldman. He explained his proposed activities. We kind of reviewed the preliminary review letter that I had sent to the applicant. Um, and then as you noted, um, Amelia from my office um, went out and took some uh, site photographs for you, and those are uploaded onto the pending applications website. And uh, we can upload more if you would like. This is another one that I, again, encourage you, if, if you can, to go um, look at the property in person. Um, earlier today, I did get an email from Mr. Goldman with some revised uh, cross-sections. Though I will be uploading those as soon as I can, having an issue with uploading. But if you recall, there was some discussion regarding the um, the proposed uh, disposal of the dredged materials and how that would look. Since what was submitted was the the same uh, cross sections as were submitted in 1992 and completed in 1993, and some questions about the extent of grading. Um, so that shows the proposed grading. It still doesn't necessarily answer the question regarding the extent of, um, of wetlands. And then also within the email that um, I received this morning from Mr. Goldman, um, he answers some of the questions that I had brought up in my preliminary review letter regarding the um, information required on the application form regarding the acres of wetlands altered, the acreage of upland review area altered, and the um, wetland acreage. Um, And he indicates uh, that wetlands altered would remain zero if it means permanent alterations. 0 0.03 is correct if it includes the temporary alteration of the banks during dredging. Uh, but again, I don't know how that has been derived if we don't know the extent of the wetlands. Um, but I'll, I'll continue to work. I'll send you a response email later today or tomorrow. Mr. Yeah, I I just got those sizes from the 1993 because we're doing the same thing. Right. And the the cross sections when you see them, the what happened last time was that the the contractor basically didn't look at the plans. He just seemed like he just said to somebody, go dig a hole. Um, so what I am proposing now, the, the result is about the same as um, the 1993 plan. What has changed is the, you know, the existing elevations because they did fill in uh, the pool a little bit so that's so the new cross section you know the the existing elevations are new okay what are our next steps alexis um i'm um i guess um A second. The um, 
um, so it is a significant regulated activity um, as defined in your regulations. There's no um, getting around that. The, uh, so you will at some point have to hold and schedule a public hearing. Um, I guess I would not want to go ahead and schedule the public hearing and go through the, um, the uh, cost of scheduling that public hearing until um, I guess I'd encourage the commissioners to review the preliminary review letter that I have previously sent. And if there is anything in that preliminary review letter that in particular, that's kind of just my comments, but if anything within it resonates with you, um, you should let uh, Mr. Goldman and myself um, know. And then um, Mr. Goldman, we had sent you a, a letter explaining that the um, commission at the last meeting decided not to um, grant your fee waiver request. And I would recommend that we not, not uh, initiate the public hearing until the uh, application fee is paid. So at oh, this point, I, okay. I think I would just wait for the um, uh, for the application fee. And then I, I yeah, I'm just reiterating what I what I just said. Uh, review that preliminary review letter and 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 let um, Mr. Goldman and myself know if there's anything in particular that's important important to you because I think it's important for Mr. the Goldman, the applicant, to have the opportunity to um, to attend to any deficiencies. If you, if you, because I'm not the decision maker, you are. If you have a real issue, he, right. it's much easier for an applicant to deal with that prior to the, the public hearing opening. And so then, so, Mr. Chairman, there are two hands raised. Do you want me to call them in order? I don't know if you can see those. <laughs> so, uh, Miss Knight. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't see any hand. Where? Are we? Okay. Hmm. So usually they're they're located on the uh, upper left of their um, pictures. I don't know if you see kind of everybody. Well, they aren't on mine. Okay. So if anybody's okay. got their hand raised, please raise their hand. All right. So uh, Miss Miss Knight has her hand okay. raised, and then uh, Miss Brown. Um, I just have a question because what was seemed new or more um, additive with more information, which is great, thank you, was about the dam and just really wanting to understand kind of, you know, what is more about the structure of that and how that flow is going to work. And Alexis, just help me understand at what point, because I know dams fall under the purview of deep, I think. Um, so deep regulates only dams of a certain size, um, okay. not really the size, but the um, of certain um, risk. That said, um, they did not, they did not, the, the previously existing dam was not under their regulatory purview. But there, you do want to make sure that whatever is being proposed doesn't push it into their regulatory pur purview. So I think you do want to have some minimal information regarding the height of the dam. And I'll just go to the photos that we uploaded. Um, I want to make sure that I'm with Mr. Goldman here. Um, yeah, that's the other. Oh, that's so an excellent photo. So this is the where the road is here. This is the the embankment or the 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 bridge as it was previously called with the culvert going under the road. The the pond is off to the to the over here to the right. Um, so flow is from right to left, and it is this. No, from left to right. I mean, left from flow is from. Yeah, I don't know. I think the screen gets turned around. It's from from. This side where the cursor is to this side where the cursor is. Yes. Okay. Is that um, correct, Mr. Goldman? It, it's on, on my screen, it is flowing from, it, it's flowing toward the culvert. How about yes, that? There we go. Toward, okay. Towards the culvert. And then uh, next to the culvert is the, there is a mix, mix of materials, some natural rock, and then it looks like some angular man made. Concrete or something. Is that the dam? 
That was the that was the dam that the contractor did in 1993, and. It was a lousy job, and in the first substantial storm, it just fell down. So we'd want to know how high the dam would be uh, um, when it was, you know, quote perhaps two uh, about two feet, two two feet above the water line. So would water no longer flow unless there was flood? So we're we're told that we should not do that because the 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 land on the other side we're we're told that it is in layman's terms ecologically better for there to over always be a flow. Um, so we had I had two two people made recommendations, but both of them talked about you know, they're always being flow. So it, it's not gonna be like a, you know, just a, a solid mass of concrete that nothing can get through. Well, you don't have, you don't, you've only got, I don't know how wide that culvert is, but it's not very wide. And, and it seems to me that uh, uh, without a measurement in the picture, it looks like any kind of, uh, uh, any sort of, um, a restriction of the flow in this picture would effectively uh, stop the water unless the water went over the top of the dam. Is that well? It can go around it a bit. Well, if it can go around it, why have it? Well, it 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 slows the flow, and you know, to be honest, I mean, in the middle of the winter, there is of course. You know, no flow. It it freezes, um, and in the middle of the summer, when it hasn't rained for a while, the level of the pond goes down. But in in nor when the dam was there in normal times, the there there was a flow from upstream. The pond is fed by two uh, upstream streams. Actually, three now. Another one is making its way. Um, and that flow will flow, you know, over the top of the dam. So, yeah, so you can see, oh, okay, on either of those pictures. So it's these, this little thing here? That's the, the dam, yeah. So on the right of that, you can see there's one stream coming from near the top. There's another one coming from that that one, and then there's another one coming there. And now is there is a third one that is coming from, you see where it says plus 62? There, yeah, there's a, there's a new stream forming because um, the drainage was changed on red coat. And it, it, the water used to just go like, out into the wetlands there and is now it's now coming down faster so a new stream is forming over there so going back to miss knight's uh comment um are you looking for more of a um a depiction on the site plan that describes the proposed dam work as well Yeah, um, I think it would be helpful to understand, especially like changing for for fish and other animals and things flowing through and the how they're gonna move come upstream and go downstream with the dam, as well as you know how you know if it if it breaks, obviously that has a big impact on sediment release, et cetera, downstream. Yeah, so so right now there are no more fish. I mean, we had them for a while, but it has filled in uh, so much that it does it won't support. We would like to support fish because when we had the fish, then we got the herons and egrets, which were really nice because they would come to hunt the fish, um, and we would have ducks that would come and eat 
whatever they were eating down in the pond. They don't come anymore. There are still frogs, but that's about the only wildlife left. The uh, haven't seen the turtles, haven't seen the muskrats. Um, and, you know, that's really why we want to restore the pond so that we have all that wildlife again. So the restoration of the pond is going to effectively increase its capacity. Would that not be the case? Yeah, it'll be deeper if that's what you mean. Yes. It'll be deeper and there'll be no change in its uh, surface area. So it will be, there will be more water there. And there'll be more water in it. But, but once it fills in, which as I recall from last time, it filled in after the, after the first big storm, then the net inflow and outflow, you know, will be equal. Okay, so you're, you're, the purpose of restoring or even having the dam just, uh, just next to the culvert is uh, what exactly? To, to, ra to raise the level of two feet or so. Because without the dam, the, the pond, even after being dredged, would be mm. much two feet below the level that it's at now. Right. And since, um, like after the dredging last time, it wasn't the walls of the pond, and you probably, I'm probably telling you something you already know, um, were, were graded. It wasn't like, you know, they, they dredged vertical walls. Um, so the, once it goes down two feet, it also shrinks in area. Does, did that make sense? Yes, the surface. Okay. The surface area goes down as the level goes down. But you haven't had a, a dam since 1994 or so, you said? Yeah, well, I mean, it started falling down right away and it's kind of getting washed. You know, every time there's a big storm, those rocks move a little bit more. So it, it went down a couple of feet, you know, in a couple of years. And now because of the, um, the sediment coming down, I, th I think mostly from Oak Hills because it seems to fill in on the north. Yeah, that's the north side. It seems to fill in on the north side first. So it seems like we're getting flow from Oak Hills and sand from Philo coming in. Um, but, but that has filled it in. It was six feet deep now at the beginning and it's maybe a foot now. It's six feet deep now? No, no. It went in the middle when we had it dredged, it was six feet deep. Oh, okay. In in the middle, and then it it was graded toward the edges. At the edges it was maybe two feet deep. Okay, I get that. So so what is the depth of it now, do you estimate? A foot, maybe maybe two feet. So all the water that's coming into it is moving straight through and going into this culvert, or pretty much. Right, up. right, and, th and it will be the same way afterward. Okay. So, okay, so it's uh, so you've heard the one recommendation that you there is not in, enough information regarding the proposed construction of the dam, and that more a um, a dis a drawing showing the dam and its proposed construction is recommended. Okay, so can I ask a question about that? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so I had two, uh, two contractors so far who gave some advice. Uh, one of them said that the best way to do it is to drop uh, concrete blocks in. Um, and the other one said to use big boulders. Um, now, what I was hoping to do is to say, we'll do one of those based on which contractor we actually pick. We, of course, haven't gotten prices or anything yet. Um, is that okay to say that? Or do, do I have to pick one of them now? I think you need to pick one now and, and show how they would be constructed if you were just laying both of those 
on the stream bed or if you are digging them in, all of those details. My, my concern would be that, that, say for instance, if you were to put concrete block there, that that concrete block during a storm could be uh, lifted up and pushed up against the culvert. Oh, I mean, they're not talking about like cinder blocks. I mean, it's it's not a Jersey barrier, but it sounded more like, you know, one big block. Right. So we'd want to know how big the one block is. Uh, what well, exactly it's, you're talking about. Yeah, well, it's about uh, four feet across and about two feet high. So, I mean, you're, so you're, if I understand correctly, you're a hundred percent set on building this dam, am I right? Yeah, if we, if we don't, the pond will be, I mean, a quarter of its size, and I don't think it's going to support much. Sorry, we can't hear you, Matt. Sorry. Uh, can you see better? Yes. I was just going to say we're going to need specifics from your contractor on the dam before we can you know, decide on anything. It's too much, in my opinion, vague debate on the details here. I understand. So we have a chicken and egg in that I can't pick a contractor until it's approved and I can't get it approved until I pick a contractor. So I, can I just what happens if I pick one and say, you know, boulders? which I think would look nicer, um, and that's approved. And then I pick the contract who use, uses, wants to use concrete. Can I come back and? You'd, you'd have change? to apply for a modification of your, your permit. OK, that, yeah. but I mean, your, your sense of that, is that like fairly I'd, straightforward or? I'd, I'd, I'd recommend that you, if you say boulders, that the contractor stick with boulders. OK would be my recommendation. Okay. And All then right. uh, Commissioner Brown has her hand raised still. Yep. Um, so uh, to go back um, to last uh, meeting, um, I had some concerns about the fact that we don't have the wetland boundary delineated, the current wetland boundary delineated. I, I really think that that is a priority on a significant um, wetland permit. Uh, so I just wanted to say that. And secondly, regarding the dam, I think that it would be in your best interest to probably look into speaking with an engineer on something like this, because there's a lot that goes into the dam and having a professional way in on how this works would definitely affect my opinion on um, voting for a dam. Okay, well, the, the, the existing plan from 93, I mean, was drawn by an engineer and suggested, I mean, he, it, it was, you know, the, the granite boulders, the, um, yeah, you can see it. Um, the contractor just ignored the plans. But yeah, I, I do understand. Those just existing, I thought. Hmm? Sorry. I thought that those were just shown as existing, that there was no proposed boulder work. No, no, no. It had, it had fallen down by the time we had it dredged. Oops. So th this was done by, you know, Redness and Mead. And, you know, we'll, we'll just, you know, we'll just follow this. Um, it, it was just- It doesn't talk about the dam at all though. That's what um, I don't, I, I know that you said that your contractor didn't follow the plan, but the, the plan, I don't see anywhere where the, it talks about- Oh, well, I'll have to take a look. Um, placing boulders. And I think the concern is that whatever was done in 93, it failed immediately. So um, I think there is a desire to not have that happen again. Yeah, because he just went and piled up some cinder blocks and bags of concrete and some rocks that he had around. 
Right. Um, excuse me, yes. I'm mailing. Um, I'm gonna have to step away from the meeting for the night. So I just wanted to let you know. Okay. Good night, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so I will look and see if I have any more information about the dam. Okay. Yeah, there's. I, I just have one one more question, just to sure. think oh, about for the okay. next meeting, and that is obviously this. There was an attempt to make a pond in '93, and you know, there's silt or whatever. If there was a pond, it's filled in with the silt that comes down in the sediment that comes down the river. And so one of the questions that I would have is just trying to understand if this is rebuilt, what is the ongoing maintenance that's gonna be required to deal with the continuing flow of sediment that comes down a water course, especially with the increase in flooding and flooding events that are happening that have been observed by Yukon of, in the state of Connecticut. Okay, so that's, you know, something that we have to factor in. Sure. Let, let me talk about that a little bit. The, the house was built in 1960, and we were told that the pond was dug in like the late 60s, maybe as late as 1970. We were not in the house at the time. So, so it was already existing when we moved into the house in 87. So it was not dug in 87. In 92, 93, we realized that it was, it was filling in. And so we had dredged again, because frankly, I mean, just, just like the, the previous person who was talking, and we bought the house because of the pond. Um, so, so the pond was not dug in 93, it was dredged. So it seems like the lifetime uh, 70 to 93 in the ninth so so it takes about 25 years to full it to to um you know to fill in again the only ongoing maintenance that we did was if a tree would fall into the pond we would have it taken out and that we had some willows that died and fell into the pond and we had them removed but we didn't do any ongoing maintenance at all Cleaning and cleaning of invasives, but it's bittersweet. Cleaning bittersweet that was trying to grow along the banks and poison ivy. Okay. Um, looking at this thing, from, this is a significant, uh, significant application. Is that right, Alexis? Let me just yes, it is. Remind. Yes, it is. It's significant. Okay, so all of the uh, butters are going to be notified, and one of them is the city of Norwalk. Is it not because of that culvert? Um, no. So, uh, and a budding property owner is not um, not. Uh, we don't include the road right of way. But would you? I can certainly refer this to the um, public works department for the comments on the culvert, if that's what you're looking for. Well, I just was, uh, before I speculated on the culvert, I was wondering whether or not the city was going to automatically be looking at it. If they were, I was going to stand aside um, and let the experts go. Um, I am, I'm just concerned. There's three different, uh, uh, whatever they might turn out to be, drainage ditches or streams or whatever coming into the plant. I have no objection really to dredging the pond. I, I really don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem with uh, the potential uh, surface area. Um, it's if you've got three different now three once two but now three different um, uh, water movements coming into the pond um, and um, at the same time you have a dam it occurs to me that there's going to be some significant differences in what this pond is after this uh, uh, dredging takes place. And I think I would be very concerned to want to have it such that um, as far as anybody can decide ahead of time, 
that the, that the uh, surface area of the pond doesn't change. That doesn't change because of the things that are happening now and the things that are planned. The, this, the intent is to put the surface, surface area back to the way it was perhaps five years ago, which was, you know, the same as 93, the same as in the 1970s. Um, the, the culvert has, it has never backed up from, from the culvert. The culvert is far bigger than, you know, whatever flow there is. I mean, these streams, I don't know if you can see them, we're talking about something that's maybe the the two big ones are maybe a foot or so across they're not like major streams i mean you can you can step over them and the, and the third one is maybe three four inches it, it's, okay well if you if you say that uh, you want to restore it back to where it was five years ago and and cleaned out uh five years ago there was not much more of a dam there than there is now is that not the case uh, that's right, but it has silted up. No, I understand. Yeah. You know. And you're talking about removing the silt, and that's what this is all about. Right, um, right. I just am not sure I understand why there has to be uh, any significant change in what used to be the dam here. Oh, because, so so what happens is, is um, so let's say at the bank's, with the dam at the banks, it's about two feet deep, and then it slopes down to six feet deep at the end, you know, in the middle. Well, if you don't have the dam, then that two feet becomes zero. And the pond that is whatever, uh, how many acres, I don't remember how many, what fraction of an acre it is, it's about a quarter of an acre, now becomes, you know, much smaller, it becomes a big puddle. And, you know, so, so what the dam gives us is the ability to have that same surface area now. And as it starts to fill in, the, the two feet around the edges goes to 18 inches and goes to 12 inches, goes to six inches. But it takes a good 20, 25 years for it to get to zero, which it is now. I mean, there are some places where it's just mud. Right. Yeah, did, did she take a picture a little bit to the left there? Yeah, so so that's what it looks like now. And the whole upstream part of it is now just, just mud. Right. And when it is excavated, it will have us without a dam, there will be a smaller surface area. Much smaller, yes. Your expectation is that uh, uh, that a dam is required in order to maintain the current uh, surface area of the pond after it's dredged. Yes. Okay. And your and your uh, contractor is saying that. Uh, that it's 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 believed that some combination of boulders or, uh, or cement blocks will accomplish that. Yes, but the person who said cement blocks, it's not cement blocks, as in like you know cinder blocks. He was talking about you know a massive block, right? Um, around which you said water would ultimately go if there were a downfall or a major uh, uh, storm event. That's right, a, right. Over the top or around, but most- Over or around, yeah. But mostly it would be a trickle that would just be a result of what comes in at the north end and what is coming out through and towards the culvert. Right. It, is all this that we're looking at right now gonna be scooped up or? What we're looking at now, um, it will be disturbed during the dredging and then, you know, put back to the way it looks now when it's done. How will it be disturbed? 
Well, there's there's going to be machine. Okay, so so let's orient it. So it, can you see the bridge? Yep. Okay, so the access point is to the right of the bridge. Okay, that's that's the way the machinery comes in. Yes. However, the fill area is off this picture to the left. You know, way off up the hill. So, so both sides, you know, will prob probably this side will be disturbed a little bit more than the other side, but both sides will be somewhat disturbed. But the, 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 what we're looking at right now in the picture isn't going to be disturbed at all. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, yeah, because the machine because the machinery is going to drive through there to dump. This will be used as a some of this. I don't know about this particular place, but some of it is used as a dewatering area for the spoils. And then once it dry, once it's dried, it will be uh, disposed of up the hill to the left. Yeah, I get that. So the machinery, the machinery, machinery will be driving over this. Yeah. Why not dewater it over on the uh, side where the machinery is? The machinery is going to be in and the over at the, to the to the right of the bridge as it was shown in the last photograph. Yes. Well, well, you can see there's a circle there with a dewatering area, but the fill area is to the left. You can see on on the picture to the right here. Yeah. The, the fill area is to the left. It says existing dwelling and concrete patio and just uh, downward of there, that's the, that's the area where we're gonna try to dispose of as much of the sediment as possible because it costs a fortune to take it away. So you're, you're saying this would be the access area and then yes. there would be a machine excavating here. This is the photograph was about here looking yes. up towards the bridge and they would be driving across right. here and then depositing here. Right. And then they would be dewatering in other areas or dewatering here. Or are you talking about so the last time they did it, they had one dewatering area on the right. Yeah. Okay. And then, but they also had another one on the left. I, again, they didn't follow the plans, but they had a dewatering area on the left as well. And then, you know, once it had dried out, they, you know, went up the hill and deposited it. Well, the, 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 the carrying, and I imagine that's going to be a big project of the dredged material from the right hand side of the bridge around the bridge and then all the way down across the uh, uh, the space that's shown on this on the right hand portion of the schematic to the large circle mm -hmm. seems to me to be far inferior to just dropping it down on the uh, right-hand side of the pond to the smaller circle. Well, that's a, so, so they can't go around on the road. And the reason is there is no, there's no access for machinery from the road to the back of the house. You, if you see where it says concrete patio, and then there are some steps, that's very steep. Where's so, the cursor on that? I don't see it. So it's yeah, this, right there. saying that the, these are the contour lines and that this area is steep. Okay. It's steep and it's also woods. I mean, we don't want to knock down, I mean, you don't want us to knock down the trees either, but there are mature trees in there. So they can't get through that way. Uh, up the hill is the, um, yeah, you can see it says approximate location of the septic wells. And so they can't drive over that either. So, so what they do is they take the spoils, they dewater it, and then they just drove right through the pond. The, you know, the pond was dried out. They, they kept pumping, pump the water out so it stayed dry. Okay, but they can't do that now. That's, that's not a possibility now. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what they're gonna do. That, that's what he's proposing. Yeah. 
Yeah, that that's why the access is on the right. Um, it's slightly on the neighbor's property. Uh, we have some new neighbors. And when I told them about the project, they were like really enthusiastic about it because, you know, they get they get to share the view of the pond as well. So so they're fine with it. So the machinery comes we in. We still from, do, do need a written written. Oh, of course. From them, by the way. From, and from all, of course, of course. But I just, you know, they they knew they just moved in during COVID, and I just wanted to go over there and you know just verbally ask them, hey, is this going to be all right? And they were like, oh yeah, that's that's great. Good idea. So, Good idea. But so so the contractor says that the uh, once the pond is drained. Um, that the bait the the bottom of it will be solid enough to be able to and they've done enough i don't know core samples or whatever they have to do to persuade themselves that they can drive huge earth loaders across it it but, was fine yeah it was fine last time there was no problem at all okay mm. i can pull the the old file and try to scan the old photos if you like I mean, what are they what are they doing about the water that's being fed into the area? They they pumped it over. They had a pump. They, there was a a circle. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the picture on the right. There's a circle where it says proposed temporary berms and proposed silt fence. So so they dug out that silting basin, um, and pump and then they would pump the water from there over you know past the ponds and then they waited until it dried out they couldn't you know they couldn't um do anything until the bottom dried out somewhat i'm yeah, not so sure where they're pumping the water to sorry oh uh, yeah. to where the culvert is so they're pumping it from from bottom to top yeah and unfortunately the the site plan does does not show that i think it is described in the narrative Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the site plan doesn't have a lot of the things that normally we would um, require. Um, it talks about under phase 1C, do water pond during a period of low flow use pumps to circumvent pond by temporary damming of inlet streams with trap rock and digging stilling basins behind the dams to accommodate the pump. Yeah, they Great kind of did that. Yeah. Them. Yep. So again, I don't know the extent of the um, proposed dewatering areas or the stilling areas, uh, how much of that's within the wetland itself. But, and again, it's not shown on the plan, it's just kind of described. They would dig a, a hole right. in this portion of the stream, install silt fence, install a pump, with a uh, pipe and discharge. It appears that on the plan, at least, there were two rows of silt fence. So there was a proposed um, silt fence here between, this is the, the what appears to have been a previously existing um, rock wall. Mm -hmm. That's Their it. limit yeah. of disturbance actually is, is upstream of that wall. They proposed right. to not touch this little pocket of sediment here. And presumably the the dewatering pump would enter between these two things of sulfans. Yes. And that would have been and that would have been really nice if they followed it. Unfortunately, the first thing that it did was when they came when they came in was they knocked the dam down. <laughs> yeah. Even, even though we told them you're not allowed to touch the dam, they they knocked it down. Yeah. So again, for the for the dam, I would uh, agree. Building a dam has the potential to change the dynamics of the the watercourse. So I, um, I think it was Commissioner Brown recommended a, an engineer look at it, and that might be a good idea. Okay. Mr. Goldman, did you look at any alternative ways of dredging this pond? I, I'm not an expert in pond dredging. And it, I know you aren't either, but uh, did you look at anything that, that was uh, to, appeared to you to be outlandish and that you didn't want to go through with? So there was one company um, 
that proposed hydro raking. Is that the right term, Alexis? Uh, hydro raking would um, kind of suction out the existing vegetation, or there is um, a, like kind of a, a wet a wet dredge where they, yeah, so the, they so suc suction out the um, the fine grained sediments. Yeah. So one of them proposed that. Um, I asked the second contractor about it, and he said that he didn't think that there was enough water in there now to do that. And the first contractor, I also got a very bad feeling about because he was like, you know, I'm okay, I'm ready to start next week. And it's like, no, 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 you can't, you know, we need a permit. So um based on that the first contractor didn't seem like he knew what he was doing and the and another one said that there wasn't enough water to do it we rejected that well let me tell you what my concern is and i don't sure. say that i'm going to continue to have this concern but i have it now um and that is i'm very sympathetic with um uh with your interest and your neighbor's interest in dredging the pond and restoring it uh, to be a nicer pond than, than it is, than it has become. Uh, but I twist in my chair on the basis that the process of doing that causes ultimately either some significant questions or some substantial uh, risk to the environment, to the wetlands, to the, uh, to the, to the boundary area. Um, in other words, I, I, I worry that the cure is, is, is going to wind up being really pretty expensive, pretty costly. I, I, I get that. Um, yeah, I just think if you remember the picture that Alexis showed with the grass growing, I think the alternative to not doing it is that we might lose the wetland completely because it'll just It'll just fill in completely. Okay. Um, because Alexis, you have that you have that picture that's showing the grass growing now. Yeah, I mean there it is now. So you know that's what's left of the pond. And you know Alexis, another just, to, just a clarification: wetlands are not necessarily pond. Correct. Oh, I understand. I understand. It's it's wet areas, but I sus I suspect that if you leave it in ten years, it'll be you know lawn, and I mean, it's not what I it's not what I want. I loved seeing all the wildlife. Well, so do we. And Mr. Goldman, yeah. I, I appreciate your assertion, but 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 we, I I find myself drifting towards wanting somebody to come in and take a look at this plan. Uh, and tell us what's wrong with it. That's what would move me forward is to have, uh, I don't know whether it would be a wetlands scientist or a soil scientist uh, who would come in and take a look at the, at, the, at the project and weigh the historic material that you've provided that showed that, you know, uh, uh, traversing the pond when it's dry is doable um you know somebody was oh, i mean they 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 did it you know i was i was there i mean they had you know machinery you know dry where that grass is now in the middle they were they were driving right through there i wish i had taken some pictures of during construction i that was the days before cell phones and everybody taking pictures of everything well, you're not, you, you won't be penalized for not having the pictures, believe me. Yeah. It's just a matter of us, you know, trying to weigh what you're trying to accomplish with, we sympathize with, mm -hmm. with the uh, uh, disruption, or as our laws describe it, the activity um, that's going to be required to make it happen uh, with any common right. sense. So just kind of a, an understanding of the the potential impacts to the wetland and water course. Yeah. Right. And the estimate of 0.03 acres um, that I got off the old plan, I think that's just basically the banks on both sides. The bank, you can see the bank on the 
right side, it's, oh, it's, it's like two lawnmowers worth. So it's maybe like three feet. And the other side is a little, little bit wider. Right. And that's the one on the one on the right. That's where the muskrats used to come up. Okay, so I think we understand the process you propose. We understand the alternative that you uh, were not enthusiastic about. Um, I think we need we need now to make to do as I think was it was it Commissioner Knight who brought up the specific measurements of the wetlands. Uh, Brown. Brown. It's 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 point three acres, point point oh three acres. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I'm, but I, I don't know what that's uh, base. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Well, no, I'm just saying it, it, I, I'd like to see that on a schematic and 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 draw a line across there and say this is this is where the the earth movers are going to go in and and load up. Uh, are they going to use trucks? They. Did you, they used, oh, I don't know if it's called a backhoe. I think it was called a backhoe and. Or a front end loader or whatever, something like that. And they, yeah. it, they drive it around. Is that it? And then, and then they, they put it on trucks and they, they hold it. So on this picture, this is a pretty good, this is a pretty good picture to talk to. So in the upper right, you can see like the end of the tree line. Right. Uh, and and that's why there's no access on that tree because that's all kind of woodsy and we're we're leaving it there. Those trees are our air conditioning. Um, but just past there, you can see it clears, and that's where they drove up to. And then it's it's hard to see that there's a hill there, but there is a hill there, and they dumped everything at the top of the hill. And it dewaters, and the water comes back down into the pond. Well, they first they piled it at the bottom. And, to, and they just let it dewater, and then they hold it up to the top. Oh, I see. Because they said so they put it here. They put it there, and also that big circle on the other side. That's what they did. Yeah. Because they said if they tried to put it in trucks right away, it would be it would just like go like soup and just come right out. But they didn't have so, to dewater so it that that long we they we will do it in the middle of the summer when it's dry is there a reason why the contractor didn't follow the plan is there a flaw to the plan that makes it not workable or was the contractor just not following the plan because so my, in the my, event that something is approved with this it was not it, that there was anything wrong with the plan my okay. my sense is that we got the you know, the owner came out, we showed him all the plans, and then he did the bids and then uh, told somebody, you know, workers to just go out and dig a hole. And the reason why I think that was um, at the beginning, they were dewatering on the right side here and they started pull thing, you know, hauling stuff away. And my wife ran out there one day because, you know, I was working. She ran out there and said, Are you, you're taking an awful lot away. Uh, is there going to be enough to fill in where the pool was? And the, then the worker said, what pool? You know, he didn't even know that he was supposed to fill in anything on the other side. So I don't, and, and you know, my wife said, well, it's on the plans. And he said, well, I don't have any plans. You know, I'm just digging a pond. So it, I, there was nothing wrong with the plans. It was that the owner never communicated it to the workers. When? Yeah. 90, 92 was when we submitted it, and it was actually dredged in the summer of 93. I think it would be helpful to get a current assessment on you know, some current plans put together by a professional right up for us to look at. Like the chairman said, a loose schematic, just a reference here to, so we know what you know the professionals are recommending. Times, times change and something current would be helpful. Uh, well, we're proposing the same thing. I mean, to be very frankly, I mean, this, this, this might, depending upon how much they take away, this whole thing might be beyond our budget anyway. But 
if we have to get someone to redo these plans again, um, I, I think that it's beyond our budget. Uh, but you know, the, these plans we're just proposing to do the same as last time. Okay, well, Mr. Goldman, you're, this is a significant regulated activity. Right. It has to go to a public hearing. Mm -hmm. And that means that there's going to be people, there are going to be, there might not be, but there could be uh, members of the public, uh, representatives of the city, uh, any interested party that was going to come in and probably we ask more or less the same kinds of questions that we're asking, mm -hmm. um, I imagine. Um, I'm not so sure that you have to redo the whole plan because it seems pretty, pretty uh, comprehensive the way it is, but there might be a way to uh, overlay in some way uh, something that shows specifically where the wetlands are. Um, oh, I could, so I could, could I just draw that on, on a picture? Because it's, it's the banks. I mean, I can see the elevation lines and you can see that based on the elevation lines that it's very flat there. So can I just do that? Well, as far as I'm concerned, you can, as long as- Okay. You, as long as- no, I, I, I mean, I don't think that, I mean, uh, wetlands, uh, wetlands are delineated by soil type, by a professional soil scientist. So I don't think that the, I don't think that you do, uh, I, I'm, unless you are a soil scientist, but I, I don't think that, that you are, I would, I would. I can. I can learn. <laughs> I'm an engineer. It, it's up to the commission the level of information okay. that that's that's required. So it sounds like the, uh, you know, Chairman Mailing may be okay with um, drawing in an estimated wetland, but it, you, the, you have another commissioner that previously said that they would like to see the wetland field delineated by a, a professional. Well, let me let me correct this. Okay. Not looking to see where estimated wetlands are. Right now, I have a, you're you're you you're interested in just the wetlands that will be disturbed, correct? I would like to see the wetlands that appear uh, that that relate to this schematic. Okay, because up upstream, our property goes way down on this picture, and where those two streams come in, that's all. You know, it's it's just wet all the time, but that will not be disturbed at all. All right, well, uh, there's a lot of activity that's gonna take place in the schematic that you have here. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm saying is if it requires a, a wetland scientist, then that's the way it's gonna to have to be to come in and flag this. Uh, and then you can do your overlay based on the flags because that will have said that this is the limit to the wetland. You don't have to go beyond the uh, scope of this schematic because this everything that you're looking to do takes place uh, in the schematic. Uh, but but I'm not saying put in where you think the wetlands are. I mean, there would have to be I a see. description of what the wetlands are around this pond. Um, and then you've already described what the process is going to be. Um, and you'll be prepared for a public hearing, I think, and for a, for a fair adjudication of what you want to do. Um, Commissioner Pence, I just wanted to make sure that what you had said was captured. Were you talking about delineation of the wetlands or a wetland assessment? Well, I, I think it's important that we have the wetlands delineated. Okay. And then I, I am just curious, I think, I don't want to speak for Commissioner Brown, but, you know, um, what, it, you know, a professional would recommend with regards to the course of action here. Okay. I, I concur with that. Concur. It's a pretty clear sense of the meeting here as to what we need to do next steps. Uh, right. So, so I will go and and price out how much a soil science. It's a soil scientist. Is that what the term you used? Yes. Yeah, so there's there's two different uh, professionals. So a soil scientist delineates the wetland. Mm -hmm. I, I will I will write you a letter with a summary of the 
uh, what I heard tonight, but um, a soil scientist delineates the wetlands. And then a professional wetland scientist speaks to the, um, the character of the wetland. So a, a soil scientist is just looking at um, where the wetland is and what the soil types are. They don't talk about the functions or the values or the, um, the habitat or the hydrology of the wetland. It's just the uh, wetland here, not wetland here. Mm -hmm. Then a professional wetland scientist does an environmental analysis and talks to some of the other questions that were raised about what are the um, impacts to the wetlands and water course is, um, are the ancillary activities involved with dredging the pond having um, unintended negative impacts to adjacent wetlands? Are there ways to mitigate those? Uh, what are the functions and values of the wetlands in the water course? Is it just conveyance? Um, is, it a, is it a very high quality wetland system? Is it a wetland system that is um, somewhat degraded because of its location within suburbia? So some kind of um, metrics that talk to the, uh, the sensitivity and the, um, the, the values of, of the wetland and just give more, more information for the commission to then understand the impact. So low value wetland is harder to have a significant impact on uh, as opposed to a, a very high quality wetland, there's more room to accidentally um, you know, reduce the, the quality of the wetland. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's a, a different um, professional. There are some people that are both. Okay. You, you, that was my next question. Thank you. Yeah. That. Okay, I think we know what to do uh, to move the ball forward. And depending on the schedule, the, the uh, activity of the wetland scientist, uh, we may soon be able to get to the point where we can schedule a public hearing. Uh, okay. And I don't think there's much more we can do tonight. But um, uh, I, for one, have a clearer picture of what's, uh, what's projected. And I think what we're looking for is a way to do it. And so okay. that's, that's basically where we're coming from. We're not looking for reasons to not do it. Good. Uh, we have to let the, let, let, let the uh, scientists tell us what, what we're dealing with here. But, and that we can do and will do quickly. Mm -hmm. OK. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Goldman. I mean, we're trying to get to the to the right place. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay, moving on to S22600, 22 Shirley Street. That's the city of Norwalk uh, DPW uh, removal and replacement of drainage pipe and catch basin. Um, and last time around, we saw uh, photographs of that and they're in the files. Um, and staff has prepared a um, uh, resolution uh, with conditions um, allowing this work to go forward. But um, before we get to that stage, does anybody have any uh, anything they want to put forward regarding? Well, first of all, is anybody here from the city? Just in case somebody's got questions that go. Oh. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, good evening. Vanessa Valadari, Springsboro Engineer, and also Mario Pizzigalli here. Um, we are here available if you guys have any further questions or if you need to see the map with the proposed work again. We may not have any, but if we do, it's nice to have somebody that knows how to address it. Uh, commissioners, anybody on uh, uh, any questions about this this project? And um, okay, hearing none, um, I'm going to move that um, the application. Uh, uh, S522-600 uh, be granted um, as outlined in the memorandum to uh, the commission from staff dated uh, June 27th uh, and subject to the conditions listed um, in that uh, memorandum. <clears throat> I'll second that. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion from anybody? Okay, hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? 
None? Okay, the application is granted, folks. Thank you. For Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is uh, 10 Willard Road, uh, modification of permit to install culvert pipe, replace head wall and install drainage in an adjacent to a wetland and water course. Um, Alexis, if you can just bring us up to speed on that. Is anybody there? Is anybody here from uh, Willard yeah. Road? Yes. Yes. Mr. Hi. Winters. Oh, okay. He's good. here. All right, good. Um, so I, I don't think we were able to get, um, let's make sure we, very busy. no. Um, so we, I have not been able to get uh, photographs for you for this property yet. Um, Amelia took pictures last week. I don't think, so we've been having network, Network issues with our, um, I think she hasn't been able to. Uh, how, how, while you're while you're looking for the for the material, okay. A quick question: um, Can we go back to that schematic? Uh, just. Go yes. Back. Hold on one second uh -huh. as I try to. Um, so they fall off the table and then they just keep rolling downhill and <laughs> okay so let's see if i can all right i'm getting closer and i found the photos um well, I would like to look at that schematic again. You wanted the schematic. Hold on. Two all windows. I've lost one. There we go. Well, I can. Okay. There we go. All right. What? Where? What? Can you just use the cursor to outline where the culvert's going to go and where this? Where? Where? What we're talking about? Yes, uh, culvert number one. So some additional grading and then um, a culvert with two, um, uh, you know, wing walls or um, head walls. Head wall, I guess, and end wall at the, the, so the stream is coming in this direction. Right. You're and being then kind. You're being second, kind with that stream word. <laughs> Right, second area is here. So again, um, previously approved, these are these are uh, pedestrian paths, these little parallel lines. Before there had been a, a, a bridge proposed on top. So now there it would be this portion between the head wall and the end wall would be piped and fill would be brought in over that pipe. And then a, the pedestrian path would go over that fill. And then likewise, the second area is here. So again, proposed pedestrian path, um, head wall, end wall, this area between the two walls would be um, proposed pipe with some grading on either side um, to fill over that pipe. Then the other work would be um, the water course um, ends and is piped into a larger stormwater drainage system in this location here, that head wall is um, uh, looking old. So the applicant is proposing to replace, to remove the, the, the old head wall and install a new um, head wall that also comes um, at to a higher grade. Right now, this is in a bit of a, a hole. And I think Amelia has photos of this, so I can show those in a moment. And then lastly, at the um, beginning of the wetland, so this is the uh, the water course over. The the wetland is in the hatched area with the little flags. In this area is proposed a um, some additional yard drains and a uh, catch basin and a new pipe 
that would discharge at a um, at a pipe outlet. This is approximately where the defined water course um, begins. It's a bit more diffuse up here currently. So the notion behind all of this is we're trying to make what is a bad situation um, better. We're trying to actually create a stream where we have sort of a stagnant man-made drainage ditch. Right. So I'll go through, I have not looked at Amelia's photos yet. So. Um, Just to the is, left. <laughs> this, this is the tower. Yep. Right. Just to the left of that excavator on the other side of the ditch, the ditch is currently filled with invasives. That's all the green that you see. Um, to the left of the, the corner of the building would be the, the southerly, southerly uh, culvert location. I think she took a, another picture that shows the exact location. So that one, this, where you see that transformer near the bottom of the tower, to the north of that, further up the screen, that's where the second culvert would be, right? Yeah, right there. And that's what you see on the left is the beginning of the fire access road. We were required to build a fire access road. Um, and so when that ends, it's so the firemen, the firemen can cross the what's now a ditch and get to the back of the building. Okay. And so in the lower right-hand corner of this picture is where the, the other culvert would be. And actually, is this where it's staked out, the orange stakes? Um, sorry, my, Approximately? I've got fancy lights that turn off. Yes, that's exactly where it would be. So it would be from here yep. across it. Yep. Um, so just off the screen. Yeah, she's just taking pictures of the, the ditch, I guess. Um, and this would this is the other crossing approximately. Yeah, there. it's it's that one and up up screen. I guess you can't see the other one. Um, so this, as as I told you um, a couple of months ago, we actually did the work in the upper corner. So this is that that um, yard drain in the upper corner, the north uh, east corner. That's okay. where okay. that's where we were having the problem with the, the the parking lot, just to the north of that for the condominium when it was built. Um, everything just flows into a yard drain, and that yard drain just lets go right above us, right above our property line, and it just flows in. So we needed to put that in. Okay. Oops. That was and so those are the those are the, the yard drains, and then just to the left where it turns green, right there, um, in the upper left hand corner, that's the beginning of the drainage ditch, and and then these yard drains are piped into the end of the drainage ditch. Yeah, right there. Okay. So again, yard drains, and that's the drainage ditch. Yep. <clears throat> and that's just around the, the corner from that yard. Side. Yeah. Okay. That was all just filling up with water. So that's the head wall that the existing one that's damaged and that, that needs to um, get a little higher. This is where the drainage ditch goes into the city uh, uh, stormwater system. So we would just be replacing that. And so hopefully by doing all of this, when we clean out all the invasives and, and we can, by having the culverts, we can try and keep some of the, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To raise the quality at least a little. Yeah, you know, the, um, I'm having a, uh, a late night brain issue. Um, the organic, the organic material that's settling in the, um, the drainage ditch, we'll be able to clean it out at the culverts. So with, with the idea of hopefully getting this thing to keep moving rather than sitting still. 
Okay, well, that's certainly what one would want. <clears throat> okay, understood. Uh, questions or comments from commissioners? This is Ten Willard, right? Yep, yep. It's behind uh, Itoro Shopping Center there. Did that head wall get damaged? When we bought the property, it was already a mess. There used to be a, a fence that was right on top of it. Um, that I, I know you, I'm <laughs> I'm sitting here using my cursor, and I know you can't see it, but there used to be a fence that was right on top of it. It was there was there was a there was a rear entrance to the old frontier site there. Um, so that's the story. This this uh, permit was put before, or the application for this uh, permit was put before us. I forget how long ago, a year ago, maybe. Um, so several commissioners weren't on the job at that time. So they don't know what it looked like originally. Um, there were, uh, there was a good effort made to show us what on the, I think, north side, uh, the, um, the space looked like just adjacent to the uh, wetlands uh, channel, if that's what you want to use to call it. Yeah, if I'll give a two sentence history. I know everybody wants to go home. There was six acres of asphalt here. Um, and it went right up to the drainage ditch. And we we conserved everything to the west and north of the drainage ditch. There's 2.1 acres that we've left as wooded areas um, at which the drainage ditch separates that piece of the property from the other piece. So we took down the old uh, AT&T warehouse and um, got rid of all that asphalt. Okay. The... Um... And it's my impression from having been there for the first one that what they're doing at present is uh, uh, holding us true to what they said they were going to do in the original uh, application as, as is reasonable to expect. Um, so uh, commissioners, any comments or questions? Um, okay, Alexis, are we uh, empowered to uh, uh, to authorize the modification of this permit now, or must we? Uh, you can, you can, uh, you can do it tonight, or you can, I uh, can produce a uh, memorandum with a draft resolution for your next meeting. Um, the resolution to modify is relatively straightforward. You would um, um, modify the the permit where applicable to refer to the uh, plan dated May 10th, 2022, as opposed to the originally proposed plan. So you would just kind of uh, <laughs> make a motion to, to approve the modifications shown on the May 10th, 2022 plan, if you would like. Well, or you can wait. <laughs> Either one. I mean, there will there not likely to be any commit uh, conditions uh, to a to a uh, recommendation. So I would suggest that we, um, if if you guys don't mind, let's take the step to uh, do this at the next meeting um, with a with a fairly straightforward uh, resolution. Um, okay. That would be my choice, unless anybody wants to uh, uh, push it through uh, tonight. I, I don't think it makes sense because I think it's good to have uh, have it just recorded since we had the recorded uh, uh, original permit. So anyway, that seems to me to be decided. And thank you. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Alexis, does that mean I can go ahead and order the head walls, spend money? Um, at, at, at your own risk. So what will happen next is that their next meeting, uh, which is the second Tuesday of July, they will meet again and they will make a decision. It sounds like the group that's currently present is in favor of the modification. That modification would be approved. I'll issue you a new permit. We will have to put notice in the paper. Um, technically, anyone can appeal for 14 days. Okay. That's kind of all that I have. I don't quite have enough. <laughs> no, no, no. I understand. I, I just, yep. it, it, we're trying to, you know, yeah. it, 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 I don't want to spend $30,000 on all that stuff. And then, oh. yeah. Okay. Thank awesome. you. Thank you.
Okay, rolling forward, uh, Roman numeral six, approval of the minutes. Uh, my compliments to the uh, whoever it was that plowed through all those uh, notes and whatever that we that we made and took last week. Uh, the minutes I thought were very well done and uh, congratulations to uh, everybody involved. Uh, I have two uh, specific uh, comments to make about them. Uh, if I can read my notes here, one of them, damn. You can, uh, no. Okay, the Renzulli. The, the, uh, uh, at the end of the minutes, uh, uh, it said something about a site visit. And I think the word not was left out, changing the meaning of the sentence that we would oh, not okay. site visit until we had a formal application. So I would recommend that change. And the other one was on Lancaster. Um, I would strike the phrase so that they could approve it because that's not. Um, It's not a precondition of approval. It's just simply something we would consider with not approval. You see I'm where that sorry, is? that was, where was that? That's in, in the, Lancaster, the Lancaster notes. For the fee waiver or for the application? No, for the application. It was something that'd be submitted and then it said so that they could approve it referring to us and that was not the reason for the submission it was so we could consider it so that we could you know assess it but not approve it in advance i mean that's not it's just one phrase you can strike the That was for Lancaster. Yeah. And I didn't print it out and I didn't have it and I can I can send you something. Okay. And you can deal with it and we can deal with it later. Um, but I would say that uh, uh, conditioned on uh, these fixes oh. that I would, did you find it? Um, I'm getting closer. I forgot that Mr. Goldman's presentation was bisected by the hearing, so I was reading oh. a smart, a small snippet. But, um, sorry, Alexis, I just said oh, two yes, little I things. Found. Okay, and I did find it. Yes. Um, I noticed that the page numbers it says. It looks like there's only two pages. So at the bottom, it says like page six of two, page seven of two. Um, and then on the last page, I think it's just missing a word um, under a report of the commission chair. It says Miss Valiet about the Wells Fargo property. I think it's just missing the word asked. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay, if, if there are no other changes, I would move to accept the minutes with uh, repairs as noted. I'll second that. Moved and seconded to approve the minutes. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, no objections, uh, they're approved. Uh, comments of staff? Um, Do you have any breath left? None, I'm tired, I'm really tired. Um, I should write stuff down. I think of stuff and then I got to say by the time uh, 819 rolls around, I'm shot. Um, no, I don't, I, uh, no comments. Okay, comments of commissioners. Uh, I would just mention that uh, uh, this will be my swan song because at next meeting we have to uh, elect new officers. Um, and I have had this office for two years, so uh, I care two terms, I should say. So I won't be able to run again uh, for uh, chair. Um, 
I would expect to continue uh, as a commissioner, um, but it uh, uh, definitely time for some newer and younger blood running things, and not old white men. Are you limited anyway. by two? Are you limited by two terms? What? Yes. You're not limited by two terms, right? Uh, <clears throat> no, your 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 bylaws say um, no more than two consecutive terms, so it's uh, consecutive. So you can take a hiatus and come back. I don't want any FDR types, huh? Be a uh, be a vice chair instead of a chair, but you can't have the same um, the, the same title for more than two consecutive terms. Right. So you're gonna stay, you're gonna stay on, John, right? I'll stay on the commission, but I won't be an up, but I won't you'll uh, be the you'll be the chairman. Okay. Or 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 vice chair. Time for youth and energy. Uh, okay. Um, commissioners, anything else to uh, add or say or do or whatever you want to say? Okay. And, um, oh, I want to bring up one thing. I was, I was, we were looking at the first property, 128, 198 Norwalk Road, right? Um, it brought me up. I hadn't followed up with you, Alexis, in a while uh, on the, the mailing to people who live on wetland areas so they know the rules. Because I think that was a very good example of people just not knowing the rules. As, as I do living in on the Norwalk River, or the Silvermine River, as I live, then my right. neighbors don't know the rules. So like, I think that's worth, you know, whatever it costs, you know, yeah. make sure that people know that they, they, they have wetlands in their backyards. They're not supposed to do that kind of thing, you know? We, um, we are working on, um, trying to figure out how many people that would be. So we are working on working, trying to figure out how we could make that work. It's gotta be like a um, map, a way to sort it through maps or something like that. Uh, yep, so we've, there's, so you have your wetlands and then you have your water courses and then you have your 50 foot upland review and then your 100 foot upland review. So um, we can map out each of those and, and count and list each, each property. Um, and then we have to figure out how we would, uh, we'll come up with a variety of different numbers for the number of people that own property with a wetland and water course or that are just have an upland review area. We'll come up with a list of all those and then um, I'm on a side path trying to figure out the uh, costs for that and how to make that work. So that is on our to-do list. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, Matt, let it's me just a, say- Matt, A large number though. Uh, it's gotta be like a couple thousand, I would think at yeah. least, like 4,000 or something right. like that. But uh, I don't know. Is there not a way to link it in with the GIS? Yeah, that's what I would think. I would think that you too. Know? Yeah. Um, There's gotta be some company that could do it easy if you just drop in the address the, you drop in the the areas and the addresses and the property lines the zoning the zoning data seems really hyper accurate in that regard yeah so we'll we'll come up with numbers for each of those i'll make a uh, note to bring that to the next meeting matt i just want to say if you want to go to the bakers you can just go knock on the door if nobody comes you can go and look anywhere you want. Uh, my recommendation is take your cell phone in case, I don't know, a comet hits you or you fall into the muck. Uh, but you don't have to, in other words, they don't have to they know seem, you're there. Bruce seemed like a nice guy. I, I'll knock on the door and just say like, I'm here and like, I, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I recommend that you announce yourself wherever you go, but yeah. What? I recommend that's, that you always- that's a, private, that's a private piece of land. I checked that. 75 which lane today that was pretty public so that was easy from the road but. oh yeah we once they apply we can go i mean any of us can go we just can't go as a quorum we can there can't be enough of us so that it would constitute a meeting you know so right, right. one or two at a time. Yeah. Yep. and as long as you're going at reasonable hours so when they sign their application the application has a lot of different statements 
on it that they're signing and attesting to. One is that they're being truthful. And then the other is that they're granting the, uh, the commission and the commission's agent the, the reasonable, the, the right to um, view the wetlands and water forests during a reasonable time period. So right. don't, don't, don't show up, you know, midday on the 4th of July or uh, late night on a Friday night, but otherwise you should be able to, <laughs> to knock and, and uh, proceed to the back door. If, if you do visit, make a note on your phone or something, you know, I went on this day at this time so that, you know, it can, if it's compared with what you, what, what somebody else saw at another time that they can make a connection. Okay. Perfectly yeah, obvious. I mean, for that property, there's only there's only you can do. I mean, like I just, you know, like putting putting in like you know seed seed mix over that that area of river. You know, there's. Yeah. I, I was surprised it was as shallow as it was over that that part. I thought it would have been a lot deeper there. Yeah. So you don't want to talk about it on on the record when we're not in, on the agenda part, though. Okay. Right. Did we? Did somebody move to adjourn yet? Alexis, you can't adjourn. <laughs> In favor. Second. See you guys next month. See you then. Thank you. Happy Fourth of July. Care. Happy Fourth. Take care. Thanks, John, for being a great commissioner, uh, chairman so far, for my <laughs> great interlude. Thanks. Thank you, Prozen. <laughs>